Welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Pastor Mike Lawrence of Faith Community Church here in Hopkinton. Welcome, Mike. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much for taking time out of a very busy schedule to be on the show today. Oh, looking forward to it. Well. Enjoy the moment. I know uh, Faith Community is a very large church, and mm. as lead pastor, I know your schedule has got to be packed every day of the week, not just on Sundays. Yep. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you. I was wondering maybe if we could start a little bit with you telling us about your background, um, maybe where you studied, how you came to Hopkinton, sure. how you got associated with Faith Community. Great. Anywhere you want to go with it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a born and bred New Englander, so I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, lived a uh, in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, until I graduated mm -hmm. high school. Went to a small school called Barrington College in Barrington, Rhode Island. Doesn't exist anymore. They closed the, mm. they closed the day my class graduated. So we like to joke and say we, clo we shut down the <laughs> we school. We shut down the school. Yeah, yeah. right, when we graduated. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, got my undergraduate's degree in youth ministry there. Worked at a church in New Hampshire for a little while. Uh, and at that church is where I felt my call to ministry and went to a seminary on the North Shore called Gordon Conwell. So did my master's program there. And just as I was graduating, uh, I was looking for a job. Uh, and there was a, at the time, there was a newspaper that circulated among churches in New England. And it was the very last issue before they closed. They, gave, they sent me out a copy for free, and I looked in the classifieds, and there was this church advertising a job for a youth minister. So that was in 1990. We, my wife and I in 89 came down, candidated for the job. She was pregnant with our first child. So we had this deal where back in those days, you couldn't transfer your health insurance if you were pregnant. It was like oh. a pre-existing condition, you know? So they offered me the job in the fall and it was, we had to wait for my daughter to be born. So we had the whole church was praying for Stephanie to come into the world. She came into the world January 28th and in five days, <laughs> So she's born on the 28th. We moved to a new state, started a brand new job, and raised our first child. That was the first week here in Hopkinton. Uh, and it was, it was exciting and boisterous. And started there as a student ministries pastor. Worked with junior high and senior high kids for 12 years. Had a great run with that. And then when Pastor Dick, who was the senior pastor at the time, he'd been there since 1972. He decided to move on. He started a nonprofit ministry for pastors called Barnabas Ministries, Inc., mm -hmm. Incorporated. He asked if I would succeed him. So on Father's Day in 2002, they voted me in as the new lead pastor and been there ever since. I'm still focusing on that very stressful week you no had. No kidding, right? <laughs> I think you hit all the top 10 stressors in life. We Moving, did. child, we to change a job. Oh my right. gosh, and so we moved into the new facility and we called to get cable installed and the guy came out and started a fire on the house. Oh. So we had this baby, we didn't have anywhere to go. We had to pack up the baby and we went to my office at the church and we hung out there for a while while they fixed the problem at the house. Well, it's a good thing you had all those people praying for you and your family. No <laughs> kidding. So as lead pastor, are there particular things that you, well, you have a, first of all, you have a big staff or right. quite a large staff. Faith Community is one, it got to be the largest church, I think, in, in town, if not, you know, one of the largest. Um, but talk us a little bit about your day. What do yeah. you focus on versus some of the others that you have on your team? So my responsibility is um, what we call vision caster, preaching, and then uh, overseeing the larger staff. So we have what we call an elder-led staff-run church. So I got a group, it's analogous to a board, like having a board of directors, mm -hmm. and then you have your executive staff at a business. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I sit on the board, and then I'm the lead pastor at the church. Right now, like we're doing a five-year plan about what we want to do as a church over the course of the next five years, and that's been a primary responsibility of mine. I have an executive director or executive pastor who oversees the daily functioning of the church, and then I'm responsible for the preaching that happens every week. So we preach for about 40 minutes on a Sunday. A lot of work goes into preparing for that. And if, even if I'm not preaching, I'm still responsible for the people who are and to make sure that they're all set. So I have a team that will help me with that. 
um, and a lot goes involved in that. And then we're really concerned, part of my special focus is what happens outside the building and the community around us. Before we get to that, because um, I'm not familiar with faith community. Sure. Um, is it non-denominational? How do yep. you, where do you pull to, uh, from what re references do you put, you know, your sermons and things together? Because you don't have an archbishop or a pope right, or something right. directing you, so. So there's a couple of things. Um, we're the oldest church in town. So we were established in 1724. And we've got the handwritten records that go all the way back. Right now, there's an organization in Boston that's uh, digitizing all of those for a permanent record. Because it's kind of cool, if you think about it, the congregational churches in Massachusetts help record the history of the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got, so we've got handwritten notes about the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and uh, the two world wars, okay. all the changes in the town as it impacted the community, you know, the church community. Uh, matter of fact, we have in our handwritten records that we stored the gunpowder for American Revolution in our basement. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Kind of an odd thing for a church, but right, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was pretty cool, and so you know, a lot of that, the pastors were responding to what was going on in the world at that time. So they'd be preaching about why we should be independent and versus underneath the monarchy of a king, and mm -hmm. and it, so our history is deeply connected to both the town and the nation. It's pretty fun when you start to unpackage that. Now, what will you do with all of those records? You said you have some handwritten things too. Will you keep mm -hmm. those at the church? Will you? get involved with the historical society maybe to help preserve them or what do you want to do with those? We preserve them right now. They're preserved at the church, but we've, uh, there's an organization, they're, they're actually got a hold of this idea and they've been visiting congregational churches all over Massachusetts and they're taking them and they're making digital records of all of these, um, these journals so that they'll be able to be on the web and people can search and use them for uh, historical research. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we keep them in um, we keep them in a secure vault so that they're preserved for generations. We've had people who, that's part of they follow their genealogy because we've got records of the individuals as they joined or were baptized into the church. Mm -hmm. So some of that, we have records of families, you know, that are 300 years old connected to our church. That's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure we're a church that's almost 300 years old ourselves. That's why we were active in the celebration of the anniversary of the town, because mm -hmm. ours is just a few years after that. Um, but as a pastor, what we do for preaching is there's a team of people that help me think through what are we going to talk about. We have this idea that um, the preaching on a Sunday morning is biblically based, culturally relevant, and application oriented. oriented. So the idea is everything we preach comes out of the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's connected to what's going on in your life. What we want is for you to walk into church on a Sunday morning, and if we're gonna to talk to you about what's in the Bible, we want you to walk out feeling like, well, that really makes a difference in the way I live my life, mm -hmm. whether it's parenting or finances or um, current events and news. Uh, and then we talk about application oriented because we want you to be able to walk out and say, well, what do I do with this? So, because we really believe that your faith is something that you live on on a day-to-day -day basis. Church is just more of a, a gathering place to kind of help you get reoriented and then re-enter re the world. Get focused every week, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been at, so like this week, uh, I'm not preaching this week, but uh, I got a gentleman in the church who's talking what's called the five love languages. They're related to relationships. Five different ways people tend to experience love. So you can apply that to your home, to your friendships, even to your work environment, how you appreciate people. He's going to unpackage those for us, but they're very practical. Like, how do I know the best way to encourage, appreciate, affirm people so that they feel it? And all grounded in the Bible. All yes. grounded in the Bible. Yeah. We really enjoy it. You started, uh, well, you said your sermons and stuff that you do. I understand you also put those out on your website every Correct. week. You have quite an operation to yeah. uh, communicate through that website that you have, which is a very good one. I, I looked at it. It's very nicely done. Thank you. Yeah. We put a, a big focus into rehabbing the whole website. Everyone who visits our church has been through the website before they even walked in the door. So um, we've got, we were fortunate enough we were able to make an acronym of our church name to be our web address, FCCH, so Faith Community Church Hopkinton.org. But everything we do is there. We've got two portals. When you first go on, it's called the guest portal. We put on that 
site, everything that uh, somebody who's never been to our church would be interested to know about our church. Then once you become a regular attender at the church, there's a different address that you connect into called myfcch.org. And there you start to find out about a bunch of the different programs and uh, how to register and engage in those programs. There's resources there for studying the Bible for your teenagers and for your children, registering them before you come to church, uh, so for different programs or whatever. Is there any particular program or programs that you'd like to highlight a little bit today while we're ta talking? Sure. Or? So we... Um, there's about 2,000 people who regularly are involved in the life of our church. Um, we have, of those, about 450 would be children and teenagers. Uh, so on a Sunday morning, like if you walk in last Sunday, there was 1,200 people in the building from a baby all the way up to the oldest adult. Mm. We have a very active children's ministry and student ministry. So there's about 250 kids, close to 200 teenagers, 6th grade through 12th grade who are actively involved. A lot of our teenagers and kids actually have helped parents come to church. They've caught on to what's going on through their friends and they want to go check it out and then mom and dad show up and first they'll say, oh, I want this for my kids and then they start coming and think, well, I think I want this for me. Mm -hmm. When you walk into the building on a Sunday morning and you walk in, the worship center doesn't look like your typical church. It looks more like a theater than a church. Mm -hmm. We have a big platform. We, um, we try to Make, we make set designs that match the message series. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a live band that does the music, so it's a more contemporary feel to it. We have a drama team that will put together videos or um, live sketches. The message is coordinated. Everything we do in the midst of a 75-minute service is all coordinated around a given theme because we want you to walk out with an experience and an impact to your life. Mm -hmm. So your children, your teens, and adults all have a pretty vibrant experience on a Sunday morning. And now we just opened up a Saturday evening service. So we do three services in the course of the weekends. Uh, 6 p.m. on Saturday, 9 o'clock, and 10.45 on Sunday. You mentioned, too, that you, uh, have, you have several ministries, and I imagine with the congregation mm -hmm. or parish that large, um, you need to have that because it'd be hard for one, just one pastor to oh, get to yeah. know everybody so closely. So you want to talk a little bit about some of the people that yeah. lead the ministries and what those ministries are? Great, yeah. I mean, we have close to 30 people employed at the church at some level, part-time to full-time. Uh, so we've got, a, we've got an active children's ministry focuses largely on the weekend services. Mm -hmm. uh, the student ministries for teenagers, they've got a, a vibrant weekend service, then they break down to smaller groups. So, um, oh gosh, we must have well over 100 kids into different small groups that are led by adults, kind of like a mentoring program. They study the Bible, talk about life. Uh, they're planning a trip to the Dominican Republic. Close to 100 of them will go to build uh, three chapels. Mm -hmm. So, again, the Dominican Republic, just churches are either they're meeting in the open or maybe they have a tarp that they use to protect themselves from the elements or a ran shackled building. They've pro uh, they partnered with a nonprofit and they're gonna go in and in five days, they're gonna lay a concrete foundation and then build the walls and the roof and erect it and hand the keys over to a pastor. That's wonderful. Yeah, so they'll do that this summer. That's a pretty big piece of what we do, plus weekend retreats. So it's a lot of activity mm -hmm. for the teens and the kids. Uh, we have a pretty vibrant care ministry for people who go through life transitions. So we do financial counseling, hospital visitation. We do, um, we sometimes do short-term counseling, but we have a great network of counselors in the area that we help people connect to for whatever life's needs are. We have a, what we call a compassion fund for people who are a part of our body. We've given away thousands. Over the course of the year, we'll give away tens of thousands of dollars for everything from your mortgage to your car, to your utilities, to food on the table. Uh, we work hard to take care of people. That's big. Uh, spiritual growth is a big component of what we do. So we have 550 people in what we call faith groups. They meet, in, they meet at home or at the church. They're studying topics that are relevant to their life that come out of the Bible. Um, they also help people find places to serve. We have five to 
600 people who serve in some capacity at the church or through the church in the community. Um, that's a pretty vibrant activity. Plus uh, our worship ministry, we have 100 people in the worship ministry. So we have musicians, artists, technicians who all contribute, artists. We had this great experience at Christmas time in our, in our design. So our design carries out into the lobby of the church and we had this, this uh, artistic structure that was uh, installed onto the wall. It must have been an eight, by, eight foot by eight foot wooden easel that was created and painted and then they screwed in 70 pounds of screws and it was connected. The theme of the series was no strings attached. And they, they created this design, you can still see it on the website, where they outlined the word strings and then some people came in and they literally wove a decoration that created the word strings as a bas relief off of the, the wooden structure. It was awesome. I think my head is spinning from everything that's going on there. It's just, how do you keep track of all, well, you have a staff. That have large, a staff that does yeah. it, right? Uh, we had a great, so one year we did something called the Heart of God, and this was fun. Um, there was a gentleman in the church, uh, he worked, he, how was it, automotive repair? Or what he did? So he, has a, he had a lot of access to just junk cars, and we told him, you know, we'd really love to have, uh, can you forge a heart for us? So he took bumpers off of cars, and he cut them out, redesigned them, and he f literally forged it into a heart. And the sculpture stood five feet high. Where did you put that? Right at, at the, right at the platform. It was right on the floor in front of the platform for the whole series. It was a six-week series, and we videotaped him. So we have a video team. So they videoed him as he was doing it with his uh, plasma cutter and the way he was banging and forging. And then we created a video about how he constructed it and used that on Sundays. And where is it now? It's in a, it's in an alcove of the church, somewhere in the church. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, he's very talented. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. You know, we just believe everybody has something to contribute, so we want to find a way to help them do something meaningful with their lives. And you, I imagine, uh, a lot of your parishioners. Well, you mentioned the Dominican Republic and mm -hmm. what you're going to do down there in terms of building the chapels. What other ways do you encourage your parish members to get involved outside of the church and in yeah. the communities and in the world? We've had a lot of fun over the years. Um, we put a we put a lot of focus on what can we do to make the world a better place. Uh, so I was challenged once by somebody who once said, you know, um, because churches are nonprofits, they don't have to pay property tax. But, you know, the fire and police still come out. Mm -hmm. So would your community consider your church a benefit to the community or a tax deficit? So I really took, heart, took that to heart. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, what? We, want to make, we want to make such a reputation that the church is glad we're in town. So we do everything from we've partnered with Project Just Because. One year, Cheryl Ann said she was collecting blankets. It was an economic downturn and uh, oil prices were high. So in the wintertime, when you're cold, what do you do? You get to turn the heat down, you just put another blanket on. So when I asked her, I said, we asked her, well, how many blankets do you need? You know, and I'm figuring she needs a few hundred blankets. She said, well, I need 3,500 blankets. Okay, so for six weeks, we worked hard with the church and we, we actually either People either created these no-sew blankets or they purchased, uh, we got 5,000 blankets that we gave her. It was amazing. That is amazing. Was um, a, what a response. It was awesome, like food yeah. pantries. Once, one, uh, one message series we were doing, uh, we we're talking about Jesus Christ and the miracles, and I said, you know, Jesus fed the 4,000. I think we can raise 4,000 pounds of food and give them the food pantries. It was a seven-week program, so each week we target a different um, food pantry and we ended up giving away a thousand pounds a week so by the time we were done we collected seven thousand pounds of food it was awesome I mean, we just love doing this stuff um, we've partnered with smock and this subtle middle southern middlesex opportunity Green council, council. Mm -hmm. so we went over to serenity house serenity house here in town yeah yep we we rehabbed serenity house we had so much fun with that they asked us if we would do three centers this year so we did one in Framingham and two in Ashland. There are transition homes, either for people coming out of addiction or for homeless mm -hmm. families. So we worked on those centers, we did the same thing. Now we, was that painting, cleaning up, fixing, repairing kinds of things, just whatever they needed at the time? That... Whatever they needed. So some of it was ripping out trim and replacing trim outside, uh, painting, sanding, um, building furniture, 
uh, one of the places in the basement, they didn't have locker storage for the family, so they came, you, know, you come, you're homeless, everything's in your car, mm -hmm. but you can't put it into a room with you, so we built lockers for the families. We had somebody who designed it, and then the junior high ministry cut the wood, came in, and installed it in the basement, so we did things like that. So you're really tapping into all the talent that's within your parish, people and their different skills and their different ways that they want to help, not only yeah. within the church, but outside of the church. Right, they right. Come, come forward and say, oh, I can do that, or I can do that. Or, yeah. I know there's a passage in the Bible that talks about different professions in life and people having different talents, but I can't quote it. But you probably know it, but that's what it reminds me of. Each person having their own gift and talent to bring it not only to their church and their local community, but maybe beyond yeah. that. We call it your shape. So it's an acronym. We feel that God's given you some spiritual gifts. He's given you a heart's passion. He's given you abilities and skills. He's given you a personality, and he's given you experiences of life. It's like when you come to our church, if you decide to get involved, what we do is we, we administer a couple of inventories that you kind of do, and then you mm -hmm. sit down with your own personal shape guide. And the person sits down with you, and they go over your shape. And then they say, okay, well, how could you utilize your shape here in the church? That's a very good way to remember it, too. It's very easy. Yeah, shape, it's, a, you know, it's, it's an acronym. We've, been, we've got a partnership with Saddleback Church out on the West Coast, and so we use some uh, of their curriculum material. That's the Rick Warren, Reverend yeah. Rick Warren, and Purpose Driven Life. Yeah, we've, yeah. Used, we've done campaigns based on his material. Yeah, I've read his book, yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty meaningful impact. Yeah. Rick's a nice guy. We've had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times and do some work out there. And in your spiritual, you said you had an area that spoke, focuses on the spiritual growth. It sounds like then that you do use materials from uh, other places and mm -hmm. uh, maybe other pastors, you know, yeah. mentioned Rick Warren. Not just the Bible, but that you can grow spiritually through maybe reading other things and sharing experiences with people. So we do, right now, we've got something called the Daniel Plan. That's is a, It's a nutrition and health so there's a group that gets together. They've, done, uh, they've run this program a few times, but it's a way of coming together. They study the Bible about good, healthy life practices, but then they're also talking about nutrition, shopping, where you get your food from, how do you create your meals, exercise, sleep. So we get that. We have, um, we have what's called the Financial Peace Program, which helps people kind of examine good um, spending habits. So we have financial coaches that meet with people. If you're going through a difficult time, they sit down, they help you create your budget. If you're in debt, they talk about ways of working out of debt, and they help you do that. Uh, we try to really approach a whole, the family from the whole perspective. Mm -hmm. We lo offer a lot of programs that you can do as a family. So a few years ago, when the tornado had gone through out in western Massachusetts, we uh, went out there and we partnered with a church out there. And so for six weeks, we sent hundreds of people out there and they cleared brush, cut down trees. And we found ways that whole families could go so kids mm -hmm. could help pick up sticks and branches and brambles on one end of it. Spectrum on the other end, we had guys with chainsaws cutting down trees and big chippers clearing out property and helping mm -hmm. to clean houses. We tried to do a lot. Um, I know family is always very important. And yeah. uh, very, you know, much a center of uh, life at church. Yeah. And your church becomes your family. I know I feel very much like I'm yeah. part of my family at church. Yeah. What about single people in your church? Are there programs yeah. or do, do they, um, what about that person who just wants to come in, you know, they're single and they just want to attend the service and worship on Sunday and kind of go on their little their So we get a lot of people that'll come in and they'll come to Sunday morning and they just, they may just sit there and not do anything and that's fine. You can come to church on Sunday and you can sit in the background, you can experience it. Our hope is, is that it, there'll be a point where you'll feel compelled to enter into a journey with us to start to connect in community. Mm -hmm. But we've got great, we've got a lot of singles in our church as well as families. You know, so we have singles, we have families, we have empty nesters, we have widows and widowers. Um, we've got young adults. We've kind of got uh, a pretty diverse population of people. Very much reflective of the community, I imagine. Right. And yeah. 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 Well, I, we're going to get close to the end of the show here pretty quickly, and I just want to give you some opportunities. Is there anything that you want to kind of wrap up, or a message that to the audience that you'd like to give on behalf of your yeah. sermons or your faith community church? And so we pick three words that describe our church: authentic, vibrant, and growing. 
and we feel like they, can, they coordinate with the name of the church. So we feel like we're very much about an authentic faith mm -hmm. that's part of a, a vibrant community involved in a growing church. That's been our goal and our direction. And when we look at that, we think, well, we want to help people grow. We want to help them grow in their faith and their connection to God through Christ. We want to help them to grow as a person and in their relationships. We want to help them have a vibrant relationship with the world around us so that the world around us is glad that the church is in our community because of the good that we do for the, the community around mm -hmm. us. People who come to our church say it's a church where you get pulled in to, to be active. It's not a passive community, it's a real vibrant community. Mm -hmm. And uh, people will tell you that the relationships they build at our church feel like family to them. It, we'll call, like we'll call one of those small groups I mentioned, mm -hmm. and we'll say, hey, we heard so-and-so was sick, and already the, the small group will have anywhere from 10 to 15 people in it. And I've had reports of them doing things like giving them small group members rides for chemo treatments, going to court for divorce, going to court because one of their kids was arrested, doing grocery shopping, cleaning the house, giving their kids rides, picking them up after school because the parent is sick. Um, going to the hospital and sitting in the hospital waiting room while somebody's having surgery. I mean, the, the sense of community at the church is pretty tender. Those connections sound very strong. I mean, it's yeah. spiritually and healing and, you know, it sounds yeah. like very strong connections, not only with their faith, but with the people that they're sharing yep. their faith with. And you being the leader of that, I, I'm sure you have a lot to do with why they feel that connection and that they want to get involved. So if you come to a service, you walk right in the, the main doors off of the upper lot. There's a, there's a counter called the Welcome Center. There's people there that meet our guests for the first time. And we tell, we say guests make a difference. Every time you come up and you introduce yourself, we donate $5 to World Vision in your name to do good in the world around you. So we've given an impact of a couple of thousand dollars to do good. So come and make a difference. That's wonderful. Sounds like you are. Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to find more information about the Faith Community Church in Hopkinton, visit their website located at the bottom of the screen. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. <music>